So folks, this is gonna be a shorter than normal video, um, but because I, electromagnetic spectrum is a tangential topic and the next topic we're gonna talk about after this is ultrasound. Um, that is a much deeper topic. So I, I wanna just have a quick video on ultramagnetic spectrum, electromagnetic spectrum, I beg your pardon. So you have met the idea of energy being transferred by giving out or receiving radiation, heat as an example of this. So this radiation uh, can consist of electromagnetic waves, which is in, in the case of uh, heat, the specific um, part of the electromagnetic, spec electromagnetic spectrum we're talking about is infrared radiation. Um, electromagnetic waves, uh, you know, um, up until now we've been talking about waves that are pr produced by vibration of something, atoms or molecules, right? So sound waves or water waves. Electromagnetic waves are quite different. They're gonna be produced by repeated variations in electric and magnetic fields. So I've summarized this uh, here for you. Um, electromagnetic waves, ha uh, waves have this really amazing property that they can travel through a va vacuum, right? So you see light, which is a form of electromagnetic wave that has traveled through billions of kilometers of empty space from distant stars. Uh, electromagnetic radiation comes at many different frequencies. So I'm gonna give you a little chart here uh, to kind of help explain what the different types of electromagnetic radiation there are and the approximate wavelengths uh, that uh, we have for these waves in a vacuum. So folks, this is what the chart is gonna look like. Um, if you kind of look at it from a frequency perspective, 10 to the, you know, uh, the, at the top you have 10 to the four, 10 to the six, 10 to the eight, all the way through to 10 to the power of 24 uh, hertz. Uh, and uh, hertz, and this is in meters, wavelength in meters, 10 to the four down to 10 to the minus 16. So going from left to right, you know, first you have radio waves which kind of uh, work in this, uh, you know, kilohertz to megahertz range. So I think we're all aware of that. If you ever tuned the radio, you know where, where that's gonna fit in. You know, we've got basically uh, AM radio down here at uh, uh, lower frequencies and FM radio kind of up here. Um, and then you have uh, down here, maybe, you know, at this point you have radar, which is the microwave frequency range then you have a large section here for infrared and ultraviolet and what do we have right here in between ultraviolet this this zone right there what is this zone this guy right here that ladies and gentlemen is visible light anything that a human being has ever seen has been in between roughly this you know 10 to the minus 6 to 10 to the minus 7 uh, meter wavelength or 10 to the 14 to 10 to the 15 hertz frequency range. Uh, every work of art, you know, <laughs> uh, it's kind of mind boggling, but that is it. That's all that the human eye can perceive. Um, so you have, uh, above that, you have ultraviolet uh, radiation uh, tra works between, you know, 10 to the minus seven to 10 to the minus um, nine uh, meter wavelength. Uh, and, uh, Oh, I should also point out under infrared, this is kind of like, you know, roughly here is where you have lasers. Uh, X-rays and uh, gamma rays, I think X-rays you are quite well aware, um, you know, are used for medical diagnosis. Uh, and gamma rays are actually used for, I guess, medical treatment, you know, uh, as well. So it's important to recognize there are no sharp boundaries here between th these different types of radiation. You know, properties are gradually gonna change as the wavelength changes. So for example, it's not precise to, it's not possible for, to give a precise wavelength at radiation is no longer ultraviolet and becomes X-rays. One thing that all of these uh, different types of radiations have in common it, is that they all travel at the same speed in a vacuum, which is the speed of light, which is three times 10 to the minus, uh, 10 to the plus eight uh, meters per second. All of them. That is something that you need to be aware of. And you should be able to see that here because you can see you know, the frequency as you go from left to right, the frequency is increasing and commensurately the wavelength is decreasing. So clearly, you know, something is balancing it, uh, this out, which is essentially you, you need to maintain the same speed, which is the speed of light, which is the speed of electromagnetic radiation, all types of it in, uh, in a vacuum. So basically, if you know the radiation frequency, you can calculate its wavelength. So, you know, like uh, taking the example of visible light, basically, right? You have 
um, I think the exact number that I have seen is four times e to the negative seven uh, meters is what the human eye uh, can detect. And it lies at the, at the violet end of the spectrum, right? So you're gonna have violet over here and you're gonna have red on this side. Uh, I, sorry, I wrote it backwards because I didn't see it properly, but uh, it's r violet on this side and red on, uh, on this side. Uh, so you have, um, can you calculate the frequency of this light? Well, you can because you know the speed that this light is traveling at, right? So if you basically do F equals C upon lambda, uh, you're gonna get that the frequency of this light is so many hertz. So that is the description of the electromagnetic spectrum. So in our next video, uh, we're gonna close out this uh, chapter and we're gonna talk about the role of uh, ultrasound in medical diagnosis and also how does ultrasound actually get produced, which is actually the more uh, interesting piece of this discussion. So I'll see you in the next video.